I'm super lucky. I have the pleasure of working with middle school students all day, every day. And I also work with middle school uh, administrators, teachers, and lots of other school-wide things. In middle school, much of what we do happens in the hallway. We're always spilling out into the hallway. And something interesting is always happening. In this example, students are working on a stop motion uh, for art class. In this example, we have students reflecting via video vlogs or video logs in PE. We teach some really exceptional students in our, school, in our schools. But, and that's kind of a big but, they're not exceptionally great with design. Here's an example of a student who got so caught up in the content, we've got some written, we've got lots of things, that it's coming off the page. <laughs> And here's one, where's your eyes track? My eyes go instantly to this kind of bird, but I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. And over here, this one says flip to find out. Well, wow, made it interactive, and hmm. Over here, this one says under maintenance, and, you know, initializing 100%, welcome reader. What is, there's a lot going on here. And this one, this is from drama, dog nap, okay? Well, Dog now, you know, we've got some great animation here, great sketches. We've got this neon bandit. The schedule change. Now what about this one? We've got this background image. I think it's a forest. We've got text. We've got the highlighters, so we can read the text. But why do we have a background image if it's not serving a purpose? And over here, you can't quite see it. We've got an ant in here. We've got another one here, and they built it in Minecraft. Why isn't that front and center? Why is that hidden over here? And this one, color contrast. We can't quite see it. And these, okay, hands versus German. We kind of got this like a little superhero thing. We've got the hand scrubbing. We've got the germ going like this. It's kind of us versus them. Wash your hands. And what about this? Rip the text, we've got post notes, non post notes, type text, a couple of amphibians. Hmm. This one, nice and big, it's inviting positive post it notes. Got some nice colors. It's kind of inviting us to read what's below. Visual literacy is the ability to interpret, negotiate, and make meaning from information presented in the form of an image, extending the meaning of literacy which commonly signifies interpretation of a written or printed text. Visual literacy is based on the idea that pictures can be read and that meaning can be communicated through the process of reading. So, how are we teaching visual literacy? Meaning is the most significant and powerful element of whatever people create for others. Here's an example from a grade eight language arts class uh, analyzing Martin Luther King. The student said, with this faith, well, this is a Martin Luther King quote, with this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a beautiful symphony of brotherhood. This is their visual interpretation of that. Here's another one. We refuse to believe that the bank of justice is bankrupt. Here's some other posters. Valentine's Day dance. These are actually all different shapes in here that they've constructed to make these characters. And then, ooh, this is from grade six. They were prototyping some projects, or products, and this was real. They actually made Oreo Pops. It was kind of interesting. Okay? And here's a gym simulation, so Global Issues Network, right? This group very cleverly created a dialogue or a narrative. So, what's my task? Government warning, your CO2 emissions are too high to reduce. So trying to entice it through using an area. This was really my inspiration for today's talk. This is from a grade 8 language arts uh, class on pers uh, teaching persuasive language. So they had to do um, persuasive ads. So they did one physical ad for a magazine or a website, and then they had to do 30 second clips based on a product that they designed. So this is the sticker tracker. You can track anything anytime. So just to give you a couple of practical tools to take away, there'll be three total. The first one, make your book. Makeabook.net. This is a treasure trove of creative, 
Creative Commons stuff. It's great for creative people to use it. It's got photography, it's got text, it's got video, it's got audio. When you click on audio, you can see a whole list of resources like the YouTube audio library and various others. This is great for your classes. It's great for your students. Two, Canva. This is an app that runs, runs on the browser, um, canva.com, I believe. It's beautiful for design. We teach students how to use this. It actually has tutorials that can help you do that. And now we're moving to create and teach this to our administration. I'd recommend that. And the last one, Google Drive. For those of you that are Google Apps schools, like the school I work in, Google's brilliant. They really get collaboration. So if you have a lot of people working on something, Google Drive is pretty great. So a couple of people I'd like to mention, Heather Dodd, she's now in the US, used to be in Singapore, at Singapore American School. She has an entire website devoted to design. And there's lots of practical resources for you to get there. Another friend, Carrie Lee Beasley, she's at United World College Singapore as well, um, in Singapore. But she's got an iBook called Design Secrets Revealed. I highly recommend you check these out. They're free, they're great, there's a lot of resources there. Teachers, administrators, students, let's all become communicators and embrace design. Thank you.